Cruella. Now, there was a time when plastic surgery was taboo, something that was only considered by Hollywood icons and pop stars, and even then it wasn't a subject they admitted to. Times have changed with the number of plastic surgery procedures skyrocketing in the past decade. We're joined now by a man who's treated the rich and famous. He's Chief of Research and Associate Professor of Facial Plastic Surgery at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary. He's Dr. Michael Evan Sachs, and you're very welcome to Ireland AM. Thank you very 42,000 <laughs> rhinoplasties later, nose jobs. <laughs> um, that's a lot of noses. A lot of noses. Um, Plastic surgery, as you, you, you said to us during the break, they're becoming increasingly popular, not only in the States, not only in the UK, but a massive rise in Ireland now in the number of people who are going down this road. Absolutely. The what? last two years, mm. I think. Why do you, you think that is? You know, what's at the basis of all? I think uh, even walking around the studio here, everybody's young. Uh, in America, I have a lot of men who are in their 40s who come in and say, you know, I'm looking tired, I have bags under my eyes, I just, you know, I'm scared of getting fired, you know, I need this job, and I have a boss who's 25 or 30. In America, we're obsessed with youth. Not so much in the UK, I don't know how much obsession there is with youth in Ireland. I think it's fairly worldwide, Mike. It is honest. worldwide. The French, in particular, they, they like to age gracefully, but when you have to really compete with young people who are bright and intelligent, so I think that stems from it. I think the older patients they're afraid of dying. Would you have it done? Would you have anything done? You know, I, they did an HBO movie about me about five years ago, uh, and they asked me that question, and I said, no, I wouldn't have it done. And now I shudder at that fact, because I'm ready to start contemplating doing something to my neck and a little bit of under my eyes. So who do I, you trust, though? That's who do the I question. Trust? Well, I've <laughs> taught about 200 plastic surgeons now, my residents and fellows, but I have a dear friend in Washington, D.C., who we're going to be trading plastic surgery, and I've taught him some of my techniques to do on myself. So, mm. not imminent, maybe in the next year or so. There's, there's, two, there's two very interesting philosophical questions about it. A, if you had a, a really valuable property or asset, you wouldn't let it fall apart, you'd constantly refurbish it and update it. Do you have a more valuable asset than your own, your own body? That's one. The other one is, um, don't interfere with nature. You're messing around with God's handiwork and you will get into trouble fixed, in the end. don't break it, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. The moral, ethical concepts of plastic surgery are important. The one thing that's very interesting, and this came from the neuroscience research, is that the cerebrum, the, the thinking part of our brain, is very definitely connected to the deeper emotional, hormonal, immune systems of the deeper part of our brain. So when you wake up in the morning and you look at yourself, I mean, you two are very good looking, obviously you wouldn't be on TV and you, you feel good about yourself, but if you wake up in the morning and you say, gee, I look old, I'm, I'm going to die, I, I don't feel good, that takes a real strain uh, to get through the day. As opposed to waking up, looking at yourself, you start getting endorphins that make you feel good. So this has been proven physiologically. I mean, that's not a reason to have plastic surgery. I don't think people need a reason. But the other point we brought up at the break was that there are some people that shouldn't have plastic surgery. If they're looking, if a 50 or 60 year old woman comes to me and says, gee, I really want to look 20 again, you know, and that's what they're expecting, mm. that is not the person that should be operated. Or at least they shouldn't be operated then. They should be educated to say that's not really appropriate. Mm -hmm. We have um, a, a picture here of a before and after uh, rhinoplasty. You said to us that um, Irish people in general have good noses. Yes. Americans and English people don't. Don't. Not in general. Okay. I mean, here's a perfect example. This woman. Uh, good-looking woman, good facial structure, good bones, good chin, good lips, but look at that nose. Um, now, she's much more attractive, much more happy about herself. I mean, the teenagers in particular, uh, I noticed it, they come in before their nose operations, and they're, they're cowering, they're shy, they don't speak, they don't look at you, and a year later after this, they're just different people, bubbly, doing better in school, uh, so it takes a lot of burden off mm -hmm. of them, and children are very, very cruel. And it does make a huge difference. Huge difference, and just, just that's one of, it's one of my favorite operations. This particular operation I invented about 20 years ago, there's no breaking, there's no pain, there's no packing, it takes about literally 10 or 15 minutes to do, and uh, a week later, they look similar to that, I mean, until it's perfect. Mm. may take six months or so, wow. but they will get a very, very nice improvement. Very Horrible so business-like question. How much does that cost? <laughs> In America, this operation is about $8,000. Okay. So. Expensive. So if Irish people have um, good noses, what do we have that's not good? What have you noticed about Irish people? Well, everybody we ages their eyes. Mm. I mean, you know, uh, Britain especially, I, I, they've sort of 
don't care that their eyes look like that. The Irish take, I think, a little, little bit better care of themselves when they look like this. I mean, here's a woman who's healthy, you know, wants to look younger, uh, grandmother type, but why should she go around looking like that? You know, this is not somebody I would meet at a dinner party and say, you must do this. Mm. But if they come into the office and say, what can I do? I want to look better. I used to look better. Uh, and this is something that's very nice. This is a technique I invented it about. It like a different woman almost. Yeah, it? yeah. And it's just, it shouldn't. What I have the patients do is bring pictures of themselves when they were younger, before gravity took hold, before the aging process. And I tell them, this is what we're trying to get. We're not trying to make you look different. But it's not a shame that we're reinforcing this uh, getting old is bad um, mantra that, that, that's so it's pervasive. It's terrible. It's terrible. Because, but getting old, I mean... I'm in, I'm in my early 50s. I don't look forward to anything great happening in my 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean, how many 90-year-olds do you know, if, if you live that long, if you're lucky, who are doing marathons? And so there is a decline. So if you can somehow just, even if it's artificial, and then we're talking not morally at this point, but if it's an artificial pushing back and just not thinking about it for a while, that helps an awful lot of people. It really does. Now, um, you, you can't obviously talk about your, your client list, and we wouldn't expect you to. It would be unethical. But you can give an expert opinion on people who are in the, in the public eye as to well, what sure. you think they have or haven't had done. J-Lo is one. Now, there's a before and there's an after shot. She famously has had her nose broken two or three times. Well, it still looks like she still has a little bit of a break. But if you look at the tip of her nose, there's no doubt it's been that it's been, it's been thinned here, the cartilages. And also... Uh, That's not shading her makeup now, is it? No, 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 no. This is, this is impossible to, to change with just makeup. Uh, and that's a very good example. But also her nostrils have been made a little bit wider. And this is very, very common. Uh, How do you do that? Does that? Do you lift the nostril up and sort of tuck it in underneath? Exactly right. Exactly right. Oh, God. With lasers now, though, well, it, it's not as terrible as it seems. Um, her lips are fine. You know, you asked a moment ago, most, you have magnificently perfectly proportioned lips. Oh, thank but you very much. most people in Ireland and England have thin lips. Mm. In America, we've gone wild with these angels. Just before we move off, J-Lo, sure. do you know what amazes me about J-Lo? She became one of the world's greatest sex symbols, looking with the broken nose and with the, with the right. slightly schmuck. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it is attitude. not for progress. It's attitude. Yeah, you don't need to be yeah. perfect. See, absolutely. Kylie Minogue, then, um, what do you think here? I mean, we're looking at a shot of her. I suppose there's a decade in between, certainly in age. Yeah, in terms of certainly. Well, again, beautiful nose, beautiful lips, still has it, still has that gorgeous kind of... Uh, cervical mental angle, that neck area, but look at the eyes. Now there's a lot of makeup going on there. But there's, there isn't a line on her forehead. Not a line here. Yeah. No, not a line on her forehead. This is obviously Botox. And obviously the good kind of Botox we're talking about that can raise the eyebrows slightly, give it a little bit more of a youthful look. Uh, I'm almost certain, you could almost tell, if you look carefully at this picture, look at the bags under her eyes there. Ten years later, no, no bag. bags. Must have had it melted. She's not one of my patients, but uh, I would have to say they melted those and bags. And a good job. And a great job, absolutely. She's still beautiful, and uh, you know she's number one on the top pop charts at 45. Is that how old she is now? <laughs> 35, I think. 35? Wow. Well. Uh, have we time for a very, very quick look at uh, Jennifer Aniston? I know we're running out of time. Uh, Quickly, yes or no? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Nose, without a doubt. You know, even a little chin work, uh, but absolutely. Very common. Very common. I think you could say there's probably five of the world famous pop stars today that I did their noses on when they were younger, uh, and even before people knew who they were. Yeah. So that's no a chance you'd be able to fix Michael Jackson's, is there? Ah, oh. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> you're not a miracle that's worker. Not you're good, but oh you're not God. that good. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank, Sir, you, thank you very much. We'll take a break now. We'll see you back here in a few minutes' time.